Does God ever do anything in an easy way? I was looking back on my journal recently and I was just looking at some of the things that have happened and how I got to where I am now. And I started wondering, why does God do things the way that he does when there could have been an easier way? <laughs> at least in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so stay tuned. I'm going to share some of these crazy life events that I've had in my last few years. the founder of God's Gals, and I wanted to share some things that I just realized that God has done in my life these last few years, and the crazy way he brought these things about. I even had to write them down, so if you see me looking down here, because I didn't want to miss anything, but the last few years, my life and my husband's are, have taken like quite a turn, and you know, we always think like when we pray about things to God, we think, well, you know, there's such an easy way he could make this happen. You know, he could just shower down some money upon us. <laughs> he could just get, well, he could get a promotion like this, or he could bring my husband, he could knock on the door. You know, whatever the case may be, we always pray and we think, this shouldn't be so hard to do. But then there's God, and God doesn't do anything in an easy way. Have you noticed that ever? Like never. It's always the most roundabout, crazy, flip up and down, sideways, upside down way that we never would have thought of. Like never. And I want to share some things that have happened in my life. And now I'm looking back on it and I'm seeing, oh my gosh. So that's why he did that. And then that led to that. And then that led to that. So it's just so interesting to see how God works in your life. I wrote a book last year called Journaling Faith and Feelings into Action. It's a guided journal, but that really got me started on journaling. And it is so neat to journal and look back on things and see how God has worked in your life. Because there may be certain things that you don't realize that God was even working there, but when you look back on a journal, it's amazing to see the prayers that God has answered, the way he's answered, the people he's brought into your life, the way he brought people into your life, all that stuff. God is always working behind the scenes in our lives and we may not even see it. We don't even know what he's doing, but it truly is amazing the way he operates and brings people together in just the craziest situations. So the first thing I want to talk about is my puppy dog's death which was two years ago I think two and a half years ago maybe so I'll kind of back up a little I had been praying a little before that I'd been praying really hard for a change like a directional change in my career I was like kind of eh about my career I mean I was doing it but I was working so hard and not seeing the results I wanted to see and I'm you know I'm an entrepreneur and I have usually owned my own businesses and I've always seen them be very successful and this was the first time I had gone to an online business which everything's going online so I might as well too right so I did and I was seeing nothing happening like I was working my tail off now I had a pretty good business so it wasn't like I wasn't making anything I did have a pretty good business but not what it should have been with the amount of hours and the amount of work that I was putting into it. And, you know, even my husband was so tired of me, like living in my phone day and night. Like I never left work. And as entrepreneurs, we tend to not leave business ever anyway, but at least if you're like a good, smart entrepreneur, you start to learn, you start to set up boundaries and you start to set work hours and that kind of stuff, which I've learned to do now. But back then, I worked from the minute I woke up to right before I right before I went to bed. That's all I did, but I wasn't seeing the huge success that I should have had with that much work. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. I'm like, God, I just 
I also wanted to make sure my business was glorifying him and I didn't, I kind of felt like I was doing that, but not really. I felt like I could do so much more. So that was the prayer. Okay. This is what happened. <laughs> and, and I literally just thought of this the other day and this was two years ago. I just thought of, oh my gosh, that's the way God brought that about. So my precious doggy, Sammy, he was like my life. He was my baby. He was my everything. My husband and I did everything with him, traveled with him all the time. So we traveled, it was about two and a half years ago. It was the first time we didn't take him. We left him with some people and he got run over by a truck. And we were on a little mini vacay when we got the call about this. Of course, needless to say, I was devastated. I could barely function. <laughs> I was like in the hotel room, like in a little ball, sobbing or running along the beach, just sobbing because, I mean, that was my child. God had taken my child. I was so upset. Only a few days after that, I don't know, I can't remember how many days exactly, two, three, four, my neck went out. So my upper back seized and my neck like seized up. I could not move. I couldn't function. I could, I was like, you know you know, like this, <laughs> could not move. And I saw so many doctors, so many everything. This was over the course of several months. And the one thing they all told me was, did anything like really tragic happen in your life recently? And of course, Sammy died. And they all said, even though I was seeing so many different practitioners, they were all saying, that's what brought this on. So, I now look back on that and I think, oh my gosh, Sammy's death brought on this neck and back pain, which completely changed my career path. So I will continue to elaborate, especially if you're new to following me and you don't know my story. I've been in the fitness business my whole life since I've been an adult, like 20 plus years. Always a fitness trainer, yoga, jazzercise, Zumba studio, you name it, always fitness. So after this neck thing happened, Pretty soon after that, I guess because of all this pain and not being able to do much up here, that then turned into low back pain. So I could barely move anything. And I saw everybody you can imagine. And I don't wanna make this go on too long, but I saw every doctor you could imagine and they all told me to stop working out. So for two years, I did nothing but yoga and stretching. And that was how my career path changed because I truly felt God telling me, guess what? You're not going to be doing fitness anymore, even though that's been your life for 27 years. You're going to do a complete 180 and your business is only going to be focused on me now, on God. So I completely changed from a faith and fitness online business to faith only. Complete 180. I ran my first ever Christian women's wellness retreat, which was a huge success. Already planning the next one. It's going to be in October 2019. If you're interested, I'll put the link below and that way you won't miss out on it. It's going to be life changing. It was amazing last year. It's going to be better this year. But anyway, that was the first thing God brought to me, a Christian women's retreat. So I ran my first one. You know, when God tells you something and he keeps telling you over and over again, you better do it. And that's what happened with the retreat. I ignored him because I'm like, I don't know how to run a retreat. And it just kept coming. It kept coming, kept coming. Ran my first retreat last year. Huge success. And then I felt that he was telling me just to focus my business on faith. So I started a Christian blog. I started an online community, uh, a free online community, and I have a membership site. It's a members only site called the God's Gals Tribe, where I teach women every single day how to put God first, no matter how busy you are. And I break it down step by step, exactly what you do every single day. And I walk you through it every single day. So that's my other thing, my big thing that he helped me, that God brought as a vision into my life. I can put a link for that below too if you're interested in joining. But the crazy thing is, was all of that was brought on by a prayer that I wanted a career change. <laughs> and I never would have thought that that would have started in the way of my puppy dog dying. 
Isn't that the craziest thing? Like that, there is nothing easy about that process. <laughs> I mean, that was well thought out by our Lord, but you know what? You can't argue with him because he is all knowing and he can see everything that we can't see. He can, he has different timing, different ways than we do. So we can't argue. Um, there's no way we can change it, but as painful as that was, it's amazing how I got to where I am now. Now, the next crazy thing I want to share with you is when I prayed for a husband. Now, I prayed for a husband for so long. I mean, we're talking, you know, since I was probably 20 years old, I was praying for my husband. And it took God a long time to bring my husband to me. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and it wasn't until my 40s that, hello, God finally brought me a husband. But what had to happen before that was I had to realize that God had to be first in my life or I was never going to get a husband. So God pretty much hit me over the head and said, if all you're doing is praying for this husband every day and you're not putting me first in your life, hmm, I don't know if you're going to get that husband. That's just what I think God was saying. <laughs> So that was when I started my walk with him, my daily walk with the Lord. That's when I started my every single day of, I'm going to put God first. I'll still pray for a husband, but that's not going to be like my focus because God removed that focus from me. God gave me a focus to put just on him and he removed that worry for a husband completely from me, which is amazing. Isn't that crazy? That has now led to my business now. How crazy is that? <laughs> My wanting a husband so bad, praying for a husband for so long, led me to learning how to put God first in my life every single day, which is now my business. How crazy is that? But I also want to share how he brought my husband to me because that is bizarre in itself. And at the time you're thinking, okay, this is so rebound. So what happened was I'm praying for a husband. I got my heart broken so badly. I was dating for the one dating the one that I thought was the one. I thought he was even getting ready to go ask my parents for permission. I mean, I really thought this was the one. I really 150% thought this was the one. And instead, I over the phone, I got my heart broken into a million pieces and I didn't see it coming at all. So I went to Hilton Head to get away, clear my mind, stay in my parents' uh, place in Hilton Head and just sob <laughs> for days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know how long it was, but it was a long time. So while I was there getting my heart completely broken, I decided to spend major prayer time every day and fast. So I did both of those. And that was when God brought me my husband. I was, I had gone to a Bible study. I met a, who is now a good friend in the Bible study. And she told me about her best friend that she wanted me to meet. And I of course said, no way. I just got my heart broken. I'm crying every day over this. Why in the world am I gonna go meet another man? That's crazy. So this man, she said, that's okay. His wife just left him. So I'm thinking, I mean, could this be any worse? <laughs> My heart is broken so much. I'm sobbing every day and his wife just left him and you want me to go meet this man. I'm thinking, no way. This is crazy. Heck no. I mean, this is like completely rebound, but even worse than rebound. It's, I don't even know what it is. Well, guess what? That is now my husband. <laughs> that was the man God brought into my life. But my point is that God doesn't do anything in a normal way. And that's how we knew that God brought us together because I prayed for a strong, godly man. And my husband is an amazing, godly man. He loves the Lord. And we knew that only God could have brought two people together in that odd, ridiculous way. I don't want to say ridiculous because his way is not ridiculous, but in my mind, it was like crazy. So that is what happened when I prayed for a husband. Not only did I start a whole new business, a career with the way he removed that desire of desperation for a husband, 
And then the way he brought my husband into my life. Also crazy. Now I'm sure I have another example for you and I don't even want to miss anything. Now this one I can't really um, tell you how it ends yet because I don't know. But my husband um, got into a really bad accident a few years ago and we are struggling with that right now. And we don't know where that's going to go. But we know that God's in control and he did not make that happen for no reason. Like God does not ever make anything happen for no reason. God never puts us through struggles, pain, heartache, disease, sickness, whatever it is. He never puts us through something for no reason. There is going to be a reason for everything. And you are eventually going to see that. Just like when Sammy died. I was like, why would you take my precious dog away? Like he didn't do anything. Or, you know, when you, you may have a death in your family and you're like, why, why in the world would he do that? We don't know. And we'll never be able to figure God out ever. I mean, you can pray till the cows come home and think you know how God's going to answer that prayer, but he will never answer it in the way you think he will. And it will be an odd way, <laughs> a way that we could never come up with. But we are not way up there, way up there looking over the universe, seeing what he sees. Like he sees the way everything's going to be mapped out and the direction it's going to go. He knows all that way before we do. So that's why this is so important just to trust in him. Trust in him. And just know that whatever you're praying for, whatever you're thinking, wishing, wanting, whatever, it's in God's hands and he is going to take care of you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I may have quoted that a little wrong because I don't remember exactly, but that, that was the verse that my husband and I used at our wedding because we know God has amazing plans for us. We know that he brought us together in such an incredible way, only he could have done it, and that he has amazing plans for each of us and us as a couple. And I can't wait to see what that is. And we should be excited to see what God's doing in our lives every day. Even if it's, it's something horrible you have to go through or a struggle or a sickness or whatever, just know you will get through it. And God has got something amazing on the other side. There is light at the end of the tunnel, like they say. <laughs> and God's got an amazing plan for you. That's why we have to stay focused on him. And this is what I teach my ladies in my God's Gals tribe that we have got to put him first every day. We've got to make time for him every day. And the reason why we do this is we grow closer to him. Blessings start getting poured out all over us. We're in his will. We're in the center of his will. And we're also able to discern much better where he's leading us. Because, you know, there's so many times you have decisions to make and you have no idea what to do. And the more you make that a priority every day to spend that time with God and you put him first every day, it's easier to discern where he's leading you. I don't mean it's always like easy and you have a decision to make and you're like, oh, I know exactly what it is. It's not like always that easy, but it's a little bit easier to, you know, create your list and look them over and talk them over and, and know, hmm, I think God's going to, I think I'm going to go in that direction. And guess what? If you pick the wrong direction, God's going to stop you. He'll, he'll redirect you. He'll redirect everything in your life. As you see from these prayer requests I had, he will redirect it all and put you on the right path. So don't worry if you take a wrong step. It can't happen because our God is so much bigger than that. We are not that powerful. We are not so powerful that God can't redirect us. So if we take a wrong step, it's okay. God's got this. So just stay focused on him and give him that time every single day. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped put in perspective maybe some of the things you're going through in your life right now. And just know great things are on the other side. I promise there's light at the end of the tunnel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Click the little notifications bell underneath so you don't miss any future faith chats.
any yoga routines, anything at all that might be going on in my life, you will be seeing it. So I thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day. Bye.